go. Our presentation is on gender and advertising with a focus of social justice and social constructivism. And uh, it's by Nathaniel, Rachel, and myself, Michael. The curriculum expectations for oral communication, listening to understand, uh, students have to analyze oral texts and connect them to meaning. So in terms of a media literacy context, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to analyze an advertisement and connect it to what the meaning is behind the advertisement. And then students will have to ask questions to determine new points of view from text. And then students will use presentation strategies and determine their effects on the audience. So um, the effects, that's very important for advertising to see how, uh, how impactful an advertisement is on people who wanna buy. And then the curriculum expectations for reading, reading for meaning. Uh, people have to find meaning in text, find conclusions in the text so that could be in terms of if they want to purchase the product based on the text on the media um, poster and find points of view in text and determine the missing points of view in text. And then curriculum expectations, media literacy, understanding media texts, they have to, the audience has to be determined. So the target audience that the advertisement is focused on has to be mapped out. And then Meaning has to be found within the advertisement. Opinions have to be found within the advertisement. And then um, seeing how different target audiences respond to, let's say, uh, advertisement about um, tools, et cetera. And then uh, as well, who creates media texts and like why they were made, how they were made, how they were funded. So all of those considerations have to be determined. And then We've talked about the techniques and media forms and how they engage the audience. This is important for uh, determining how advertising works in uh, media. And uh, this is really critical for uh, advertisers to um, make a return on their investment. And then we have to uh, think about how to create media text and what, like why media text is being made if it has a certain product in mind. Um, techniques to communicate the media text message to sell the product, and also many different uh, forms of media text. We're going to talk about posters today for the most part, but there's many different, including um, T-shirts, images, pamphlets, commercials, and many others. And then um, we got to look for strategies found in text and how they can be improved, and then um, how we can use many different linguistic skills in terms of listening, reading, and writing to produce media texts. And then um, social justice in the media arts. Uh, we can't be making gender-focused advertisements that have an unattainable definition of beauty. Uh, there's a lot of unattainable definition of beauty and it caught in advertisements and they cause low self-esteem. Um, and this is not this is not beneficial for the self-esteem of people that read these advertisements. Okay, so I'm gonna make these social uh, the links to social constructivism as uh, profited by Vygotsky. Um, in a social constructivism or an environment where that is the prevailing uh, educational standard, learning is considered an active and collaborative process which is built upon our existing foundations of knowledge and that knowledge develops in the first place as a result of our interactions with our culture and our community and our environment. Um, although we do help each other in the construction of meaning, our knowledge is personal to us. So that's to say that we are not uh, objective and we may walk away from a learning experience or a meaning making session of some kind with a completely different um, concept of what occurred and, and what was established than the person who was sitting next to us at the same table. Um, when we're faced with new experiences, we update our mental models and we construct our own perception of reality uh, in this model. Next slide. Uh, our teacher responsibilities in this type of a classroom are myriad actually, although the students do share a lot of the burden of responsibility. Um, we are tasked with creating an active collaborative space as educators where the students can be focused on sharing and problem solving and don't need to be um, concerned too much with any of the traditional trappings of the classroom. 
Our job is to act as a facilitator guide uh, to understand where our students as a group and individually are at in terms of their development and their understanding of the concept. And it's also our job to recognize the strengths and limitations of social constructivism as a classroom operating principle, which tend to be that it's a bit difficult to, to test and schedule, but also that it gives the students a real sense of agency in their own learning. Um, so if we just move on to the next one, I have a model here of how Vygotsky's theory tends to function in classroom practice. If you'll notice, it emphasizes a lot of peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, the students being aware that they are co-constructing their own knowledge, uh, working in learning groups that can be uh, online or it can be in person. There's a lot of reflection, a lot of dialogue and the teacher provides the scaffolding, which includes, but is not limited to, um, putting tasks into a sort of a real world realistic context so they're authentic, encouraging ownership and a voice in the active learning process, making sure it's student centered, um, embedding learning and social experience, um, including multiple modes of representation and also providing experience with the knowledge construction process so that the students determine how they will learn. All right, so our lesson plan about gendered advertising will begin by me introducing uh, advertising and gender. I will perform a modeled reading approach. So I will do as the students watch to establish the forms and rules of comportment for analysis. Then students will go into breakout groups to analyze images uh, they'll be grouped to determine the ways in which gender is being portrayed in these various images. Students will then create lists of words that could describe their findings, making this list of associative and effective words uh, that describe the advertisements. Students will then be able to categorize the kinds of associations that advertisements are making uh, with their viewers. And then lastly, as a group, we'll discuss our findings. Uh, we'll discuss the ways in which gendered associations within advertising develop collective understandings, and then we'll discuss the implications of those understandings for the wider world that we live in. So firstly, we'll talk about what advertising is. It is about selling something to consumers, and then we'll also talk about gender, which is itself a socially constructed construct, idea, um, so what I'll be talking about here is I'll be looking at the kitchen set, right? And I'll say, in this image, I'm seeing pinks, I'm seeing pastel colors, I'm thinking about the space that we're in. It's a kitchen space, it's a domestic space. I'll also be talking about the ways in which I might think about who inhabits that space, right? It, as a plaything, as somebody playing with this object, they're role playing a particular role. That is the person who performs the social reproduction in the household, right? So who makes dinner? Who makes the food that we eat on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, these roles might change from household to household, but it, it's a conversation that students can sort of have. Next, I would look at the following image, which is an image of a toy workbench. Again, I'll think about the colors that are made uh, or used in creating this, 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 this toy. I'll think about the kinds of uses that this toy has in sort of the wider world. It's about tools, it's about building. I'll think about, again, the roles that the children utilizing these toys inhabit. So who is it that makes repairs around the house? Who is it that uses these workbenches? Again, these social roles could change from household to household, but it opens up this conversation. And then lastly, I'll point to the fact that in this particular model, there's math on the back backdrop. Um, this is an association that we oftentimes have when gendering that boys are good at maths and sciences and girls are good at arts. And in this case, HOMAC, right? Uh, Following my model reading of these toys, students will have the opportunity to go through a variety of media images. For instance, this Kinder Surprise, which is broken into boy, girl, blue, pink, uh, and has sort of cutesy animal living images on one side and then wheels, wheels, wheels on the other. And then also, for instance, another example would be our next slide. 
which um, has both Girls Life magazine and Boys Life magazine. We talk about the various ways in which both of these are sort of hitting at different places. And these would be um, objects that students would have to sort of look at and analyze themselves. So things they might come up with is the fact that the girl is younger, the boy is older, he has facial hair, she is like far younger than he is seemingly. The boys is about climbing mountains, is about sports, is about athletics, ambition. The girls is about dating, is about focusing on her body, beauty. And again, the color schemes sort of match the color schemes that we've already seen in previous advertising. Finally, we would turn to the questions that we would ask. What ways were the various products marketed to boys and girls? What kinds of messages do these ways of marketing strategies tell us? Uh, about what the advertiser think about boys and girls. And then we'll sort of broaden the scope. What ways have students themselves experienced advertising that spoke to their gender? And then what kind of ways can we change advertising to so that it didn't reinforce certain gender stereotypes? Lesson done. <laughs>